Today we are going to show you a tutorial on how to do an oven cleaner. This is my absolute favorite way to clean the oven. My grandmother taught this to me years ago. I enjoy it so much because normally in the past I used to just turn on that, you know, clean clean feature. Yeah, that's oven. what I use a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it stinks up the house. It leaves char in the bottom. It does. The, I just think it doesn't get your oven as clean. Right. And I like mine really clean. Sure. So what we have today are the ingredients and supplies that you need for this pro this oven cleaner. So this is one of the great things about this. It's all stuff that I normally have in my house anyways. Mm -hmm. So you've got your white vinegar, your Dawn, baking soda. You'll need a couple of measuring cups, something to stir with, a bowl. We like these little scrubbies. They're crocheted. Emmeline does them and they're fabulous. She gifted me a couple of them. She's working on a video, so yes. we'll see if she's got that done. Um, and then rags. You'll want old rags because by the time this is done, these are gonna, the rag portion is going to be pretty well destroyed. These throw in the washing machine and you can just use them all over again, which is why we love those so much. The other thing is, this bowl looks pretty big for what we're doing. I mean, we could put all of this in there and it wouldn't fill up the bowl. But what you're going to find is the baking soda, when it interacts with the, the uh, Dawn and the vinegar, is going to bubble and foam up. So we use a little bit larger bowl just so that we don't end up with a mess everywhere. Yeah, I mean, just think uh, the volcanoes when you're in elementary school, you yeah. know, vinegar, baking soda, and exactly. then with the bubbles up, even adds more, so kind of fun. Um, so take a look at my oven. We have been waiting an extra long time so that we could make this really good. Now my oven is a tool that I use all the time and mm -hmm. it's going to be obvious. Well, you guys have seen us using it right. tons and that's right. just videos. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is scary. So really bad right now, even on the racks, it's horribly grimy and on the front here, I don't know how well you can see it. We'll do some closer in shots in just a few yeah. minutes, but I'm super excited to try this because I've been looking for something natural. Okay, so we're going to begin mixing up the okay. paste. It's essentially going to be a very gooey paste um, that we then are just gonna dab on. What's great about this cleaner, it's really no scrub. We are literally going to dab this on and walk away and come back in like an hour. They say you can leave it completely overnight. I will usually do about an hour. This one's pretty dirty. We're just gonna leave it on and mm -hmm. get around back to it whenever do some we get other back things to and it then this come afternoon. Back. Yeah. So maybe we'll tell you how long later. I mean, cause then you'll know that it cleans a really dirty oven, but yeah. we'll see. Okay, so the first thing you need is one fourth of a cup of distilled vinegar or white vinegar, vinegar. I, I've even used apple cider vinegar, just whatever vinegar you have around. Then we need half a cup of Dawn. And this is gonna be easier to take that off and just pour it in. Oh, sure. Just unscrew. I buy because my it's such stuff. large amount. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I buy my Dawn. I use it all the time for so many different things. I buy it in bulk and this is my refill. This is right. my small one. I buy wow. it in the industrial, bulk, bulk. like, <laughs> yeah, because I love it. My favorite dish soap. Because <laughs> I use it in everything. It's really effective. Someday I'm going to teach you how to whiten your whites with it. Oh, I've got a great I need that. white whitening recipe. Okay, next we need one and a half cups of baking soda. We have a one cupper. We're going to put in a cup, and then we're just going to kind of estimate the half. Um, and then this is going to start foaming as soon as she drops the baking soda in here. So we see it go, beautiful. As we stir, it's gonna kind of foam up a little more. And what we're going to do is this is going to create a thick paste. See how that's doing that? You wanna give it a stir? I No, stirred. that's pretty fun actually. It is. My kids actually like to have me do I was the just dab thinking on that part. my kids would probably like yeah. this. It's a fun. They like to see the fact that they don't have to do any scrubbing. Also, guys, this works really good on bathtub grime oh, and like shower that would grime. Be good too. Yeah, yeah, I use this mixture. This is my go-to cleaning mixture, and it doesn't strip paints. It doesn't do anything. I mean, so it's I, gentle but effective. Yeah, I even use minus the baking soda. I even have a variation of this to wash your car with waterless car wash. Because huh. when we were living down in California, there was water shortages. Right. Okay. What do you think? Okay. 
That's perfect. Let's open okay. the oven. Sounds good. Okay, so now you have a close up of the oven. This is so simple. All we're gonna do is bring our bowl down here and our scrubbies. Um, for, for, we're going to clean the racks also, but we need to pull them out first because they're going to be in our way. You can just feel the grime on these. Oh, they're really bad. I'm actually really excited to do this. I've been telling Marie, we need to get your oven clean with our stuff. But we wanted to let it get really bad. Okay. Because now you'll be able to really see how well this works. Yes, exactly. So you just want to take your scrubby, and I start in the back, otherwise I end up with it all over my stomach. This is not a scrub. This is a dab. You just want to get it on here. Just dab it on, get it nice and thick. And what it's going to do is it's eventually going to kind of dry as it as the hours pass and then we'll the washing it off it will literally just wipe off there will be no scrubbing as far as the top goes avoid your elements um you know they, you shouldn't have much around them you can wipe off those a little later i think the majority of everything is down at the, at base. the base yeah, yeah. and the the front here because that's where you're that's where everything falls. Mm -hmm. And all these little edges of where the things go, I'm literally just making sure it dabs on there. And I'm barely running my hand. There is no yeah, no scrubbing. There's no scrubbing to this. Which is my favorite part. Right. <laughs> okay, now we're going to And I these charred this bottoms. Like we could have pulled out some of this, like had we wanted, but we don't care. It'll just come out. It'll just come out. Okay, I'm gonna start your doors here, sure. and then we'll move it into the other one. Cause Are we gonna one, need some more for we this? We may, yeah, yours is pretty dirty. Yeah, I'll get some more. <laughs> yeah, double batch. Ready? So we got our second batch here. So don't be afraid to make more if your oven needs it. Now when I clean my oven, my oven is a little smaller for one. I have just a standard size. Marie's is a little oversized here. Um, one, one batch does pretty well, but we weren't letting mine prepare for a video either. You're gonna... And it's, it, we're putting it on pretty thick here. It mm -hmm. doesn't have to be this thick. We're kind of doing it because this one is grimy, but we want you to show that there is no, there's no scrubbing to this. We're literally going to leave this on and we're gonna walk away from a cup for a couple hours. And when we come back, you're gonna see magic, literal magic. <laughs> super excited about how your oven is turning out. Me too, me too. So this is this is gonna be fabulous. I just can't wait. You can already see like the grease the drips and everything down. melting. Like uh -huh. look at that chunk ran down and it cleaned it as it went. Right, right. Oh, like no scrubbing required. The first thing we need to do is we need to remove the racks. And you can see there's just, the stuff's coming right off of them as well. Racks are kind of tricky because they're so, the, you know, edges of them and they're, they're round, like round bars and everything, you know, they're a little more difficult to kind of scrub, but you know, you could have just put those in the, if you have a deep enough and big enough sink, you could have also just stuck these in the sink and done them right in there. The next thing is, is well, I'm gonna give you some information, okay? We need to scoop out as much as we can before we start adding too much bubbles. 
We ended up doubling this batch so of oven cleaning. cleaner. And so, you know, we have a whole cup of Dawn dish soap. And mm -hmm. you know, the tiniest little teaspoon goes so far with Dawn. Right, right. Like we could fill your house up with bubbles with yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. So let's start by just coming in here and scraping stuff. Scraping yeah. off the worst of it. Mm -hmm. Now you see how this is kind of dried? That's yeah. what it's supposed to do. You know, the longer you leave it, the more dry it's gonna be. We're just trying to scoop some of these chunks out of here. And we've left it for a couple of hours now. Yeah. Oh, the stuff is just scooping up. Yeah. It's great. So you could put this into your water, but you would have to be changing out your water frequently. So we right. decided to just pull a separate bowl here and scrape it into that. And then we'll be doing the water and rags afterwards. And this stuff is just coming right off. I mean, look at all of this. That's quite a bit there. I think so. Let's shift to the rags now. Okay. Here, take this one. Thank you. So we can do this one of two ways. We can take the rags and just soak them up and start wiping. But honestly, it may be good if we rinse those out and do one wet scrub over okay. to try to get everything moistened Sure. It, because it will come off easier. So we're gonna just wash Great. those rags real quick, the scrubbies. You just use that to get it nice and wet. Now that everything is pretty wet, we are going to move to our wet rags and we can cover more surface area with these. And I'm gonna kind of work my way in first, just like that. Yeah, start with this door so we can lean on it a little yeah, more. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It's times like this when you're really glad that uh, you're doing YouTube videos. <laughs> <laughs> with a partner. Right, with a partner. <laughs> <laughs> Two of us cleaning the oven. Right, right. <laughs> so if you've got little chunks that are just being stubborn, a magic eraser works. Um, it's not quite as natural as what I like. Oops, I got your hand. But it's pretty effective. Usually your oven wasn't quite as bad and this wouldn't have been a problem. I've used this on my oven oodles of times and never had any problems getting those off, but that's just too many layers baked on. And if we if we probably, we probably did another layer, a second time, right, yeah. a second time on just that door there might have helped that. You may need to switch your water a couple of times during this. Like I said, we have essentially endless soap here but can you believe how great this is for the fact that all we did was walk away for a few hours? At this stage, when we're starting to get down to the lesser amounts of soap, it's really good to use cold water in your in your bucket because it will reduce the amount of bubbles. So see that, how now that I'm down and with straight cold water, the amount of bubbles has reduced and we have that oven door looking oodles and oodles better. Now I'm getting in here down these sides. Again, I've scrubbed these off pretty well. And now we're just getting down to the bare and all of the stuff off the side of the oven is completely gone. So now I still have a couple of little black specks that are, that are really being tenacious here and sticking on. So I'm just gonna take a brand new razor. You have to be careful though, because a lot of times um, there'll be like linings and stuff on here that you don't wanna scratch. So just be gentle if you're gonna use this technique. getting off 
This is from previous oven cleaners when we weren't using an all natural method mm -hmm. and we turned on your cleaning, uh, cleaning mode. mode. Mm -hmm. So now this is this is not just something that this method missed. This is right. was actually baked onto here and is now coming up and it's been loosened because of our natural cleaning right. method. Right. But because it's so bad, that's why we're having to use the razor blade. So we're showing you guys all kinds of methods today. We were hoping it would all just like melt off, but evidently we're at a different level here. <laughs> exactly. When you use a razor blade and it chars like this, that's how we know it's the oven cleaner. If this was the food that and the grind from an actual cooking session, it would have balled and been gummy at this point. Because when we were first right. cleaning off this stuff, it was a lot more gummy. So that's how we know that this is from the oven cleaner method. Right, right. Look at that. That is the non-cleaning part from today. Right. That's how much was left after the oven cleaner last time. Yeah, not that's bad at all. No, it's not bad at all, but that's gross to still have that in there. It is. When and that's because we normally use the oven cleaning method and then just like wipe out the big stuff on the bottom. So we're going to be a little bit more thorough about this in the future. to find one that you can just put on and leave. Right. <laughs> I'm waiting for the day. <laughs> Abracadabra. There's always a little bit of work involved. Yeah. Wouldn't be life if there wasn't. It dripped through from the crack, so that you'll want to open up your oven door, and you'll want to your drawer underneath it, and you'll want to clean that off, not let it fall into whatever items you keep in your drawer. So we are now done with the oven. Look how clean it is. I'm not afraid to touch it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's fabulous. Now, I'm not gonna let it get that bad again, but with the tools that we used and the solution that Emmeline gave me, mm -hmm. we were able to get this clean in a relatively short period really of time. Really short amount of time. Yeah. Had we started just scrubbing in on this with water and scouring right. pads and things, we would have been at this all day. The fact that we could leave it for a few hours uh -huh. and then come back, and it's been less than an hour to completely scrub out right. this entirely dirty oven. Now the worst part was probably cleaning these racks. We found that steel wool was the best thing to help mm -hmm. with that. Now if you have a deep enough sink, you could even dilute this solution a, lot, a little bit with just water in the bottom of your sink and lay these down inside. Mm -hmm. That would really help. My sink, Marie so has, a, has a split in her sink so it doesn't work for hers. My sink at my house, I just pull my racks out and just lay them right down in the bottom and just make this solution, dab it all over it, add water to keep it moist, and then when I come back, I can usually just pick up my racks and this stuff has come off pretty well. We also noticed that because of the cooking uh, oven cleaner, the racks had that same gunk that was Blast on the stuff. bottom, mm -hmm. plasticky feeling stuff, right. uh, coated onto these, and we really scraped that off so that the next time we go to clean Marie's oven, it's not gonna be bad at all. Honestly, I don't think I'm ever gonna use that cleaning segment again. I think I'll just do it like this. This is yeah. a much better method. Well, we hope that your oven is now sparkly clean, uh, just as ours is. <laughs>